video, this is the secret ingredient to prepare the most effective kidney cleanse on earth. Catherine here, I've been helping people suffering from kidney disease take control of their health for more than a decade now. And I have seen amazing results with CKD patients who have improved their kidney function, reduced their inflammation, and lowered their blood sugar levels. One crucial insight I've learned from my journey is that kidney disease calls for a more holistic, natural approach. Because you see, prescription medications work, no doubt about it, but there is an organ that's going to pay the price for all the medications you take, the kidney. This is where natural medicine can help us. What I want to share with you today is not just a common preparation. Thanks to my background in naturopathy, today I will share with you an industry secret of natural medicine. This tea has a secret ingredient that only few experts know about, an ingredient with incredible kidney detoxing benefits, which can make a huge difference in your kidney health, naturally and fast. It will provide you with a fast but long-lasting boost in your kidney health. And while you see immediate results, this preparation truly shines when it becomes a part of your daily routine. It's like planting a seed and nurturing it every day. Small, consistent changes can grow into a mighty tree of good habits. Now guys, this tea is not the only good habit I want to share with you today. There is something very important I want to talk about. You see, this tea is not a magic bullet. It works best when combined it with other three healthy habits I want to share with you today. The goal, the most effective way of cleansing your kidneys naturally and fast. Don't miss my last entry in particular because without that one, the other three are going to be useless. So watch this video very carefully, especially the last part. And before I start, please keep in mind that you want to consult your nephrologist before adding any new supplement to your regimen. Now guys, as promised, there is a potent preparation that's coming from natural medicine that I want to share with you. This is a tea, a decoction to be more accurate, and it is a potent one. Let's see how to make it now. What you see here are some powerful herbs that we will use to make a decoction. These are very easy to find, most herbal shops carry them, and the way to prepare these is going to be super easy. First thing here is a favorite of mine, Astragalus membranaceus. Seriously, this plant is so good for the kidneys, you would benefit from this preparation even with Astragalus alone, without adding anything else. Why am I saying that, you may ask? Well, Astragalus was extensively tested in stage 4 and 5 patients with just one goal in mind, delay and stage renal disease as much as possible. And the results they obtained were impressive. In particular, stage 4 patients were able to increase their GFR by 12.4% in just 3 months as we can see here, which is absolutely impressive. Now, Astragalus was tested very extensively on people with kidney issues, with several studies confirming these findings. One of the most interesting properties of Astragalus is its ability of protecting the kidneys from the dangers of diabetes. Studies say that it can lower blood sugar levels and treat diabetes. As we can see, in this meta-analysis, Astragalus significantly reduced fasting plasma glucose in people with diabetes. Fasting plasma glucose is the most important marker of diabetes, and this meta-analysis involved 1,054 participants. We can be sure that these results are solid. There are various ways you can take astragalus. Most common is the extract. Test subjects took 2.5 grams of astragalus twice a day for up to one year. But what I'm going to use today is the desiccated root of the plant. This is even more natural. And in my preparation, I'm also going to add stinging nettle. Yes, this is the common nettle that grows as a weed in many gardens, and it has powerful properties. It's no secret that stinging nettle is probably one of my all-time favorite herbs. Nettle is a superior tonic for treating exhaustion and fatigue, especially for those who are debilitated by stress. 
and nettles high nutrient and cleansing properties support the whole body but especially the kidneys the main mechanism in which this amazing herb supports the kidneys is by helping controlling high blood pressure and diabetes. Stinging nettle has diuretic properties that are going to help with blood pressure according to studies. Other studies also support the use of stinging nettle as a way to control blood glucose levels naturally. Time to see my secret ingredient now! To make this preparation extremely powerful as a detoxifier, also add my secret ingredient, juniper berries. These berries you see here are a powerful cleanser and detoxifier for the kidneys and bladder. They will help flush out impurities and toxins and, according to research, they will directly increase the rate of kidney filtration. Amazing, isn't it? Juniper berries are also used in many traditional medicine practices because they are rich in essential oils and flavonoids that function as potent antioxidants. This can help reduce inflammation and swelling. But what makes this berry really unique is its ability to detox and cleanse the kidneys by improving urine output. This is why some contemporary herbalists primarily use juniper as a diuretic, alright? Yeah, juniper berries are a powerful detoxifier, almost a form of natural water pill. And this is some sort of trade secret, by the way. Now, what you need to know is that while most people won't have problems with this berry, it's very safe, don't worry. There is a chance of mild discomfort and stiffness in the low back when you use this tonic. If this happens, don't be alarmed. These signs are only showing that the release of toxins from the kidneys is happening. This would only indicate that this secret ingredient is indeed cleansing your kidneys. Time now to see how to prepare a decoction out of these powerful herbs. This is what naturopaths do to make herbs more powerful. Because you don't want to leave any of the benefits of these herbs on the table. So first, I'll add the astragalus and the juniper berries to the mortar and make them into small pieces. In the meantime, here you can see the right quantities for these herbs. Then, these herbs need to soak in about 30 oz of water or a little bit less than a liter for 2 to 4 hours before making the preparation. This step can also be done the night before if you want to make the tea in the morning. Now they're ready to boil! When the water boils, reduce the heat and let simmer for 20 to 30 minutes. Strain, allow the tea to cool and our kidney tonic is ready! And guys, if you think this was interesting, consider sharing this video with a friend and also give it a like! Time now to learn more about a good habit that can make a fast and effective natural detox actually possible. Because this tonic is going to be a huge help in detoxing your kidneys, not up about it! But there are three other habits that can help even more. Because as I was saying, in the next few days, we are going to start four good habits that can make a huge difference naturally and fast. So during the second day, there's a couple of nutrients I want to focus on. If your goal is to detox your kidneys, there are two things you absolutely don't want to be deficient in. I'm talking about vitamin B6 and magnesium. So keep in mind that our goal here is to increase urine production, alright? This is a way to directly improve the filtrating ability of the kidneys. And in people with kidney disease, vitamin B6, especially when combined with magnesium, is linked to increased urine production, suffering from premenstrual syndrome, alright? but they were also suffering from water retention and as we can see here, magnesium and vitamin B6 together had huge effects on water retention when compared to a placebo. Now, while people with kidney problems were not the primary target of this study, we can still benefit from their findings. First of all, because magnesium deficiency is extremely common in sick patients and it can cause serious symptoms including high blood pressure and water retention. And Taking magnesium with vitamin B6 has also shown to improve absorption significantly. So how to benefit from these findings? 
If you have kidney disease, get prescribed a renal multivitamin containing vitamin B6. An ideal dose for B6 is around 10 mg a day. Take it with 300 or 400 mg of magnesium oxide a day. This is recommended for kidney disease patients. Just remember to consult with your nephrologist if you want to supplement magnesium. A bit rare, some patients have too high levels of this mineral. Now guys, the question I always receive when I talk about magnesium is why do you recommend magnesium oxide when there are other forms that are more bioavailable? The reason is because magnesium oxide is the most studied and most effective form of magnesium in people with kidney disease, okay? Okay, so we know that it is bioavailable, enough at the doses recommended. But if you want to learn more about the other forms of magnesium, I've made a full video about this topic. It's up here and also down in the description. Okay guys, we have seen two incredibly effective ways of boosting your kidney function in a very small amount of time. Okay guys, we have seen two incredibly effective ways of boosting your kidney function in a very small amount of time. But there is one thing that's even more effective than these two tips. And I know this is going to require some effort, but I promise that it's going to be worth it. I'm talking about exercising. Exercising regularly is the best friend of your kidneys and your health in general. Says science, exercising is the most effective way to go from losing kidney function to improving it. What? You don't believe me? You want to see some proof? Well, I'm glad you asked because there is some very solid evidence to prove that exercise can help you. In particular, there is a very recent study conducted on a huge number of CKD patients, 1,199, that proved once and for all that exercising protects the kidneys. So what they did in this study is dividing the test subjects in two groups, all right? One group did moderate physical activity for two years. The other group didn't, but they received some health education training nonetheless. However, after two years, researchers were able to observe that CKD patients who exercised had, on average, a GFR higher by a whooping 0.96 points than those who didn't. Now, that's a huge difference, especially because it was observed in a very big number of participants. Exercising will also lower your blood sugar levels, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and improve several other health markers, way better than pills. Researchers also found out another reason why exercising is so helpful even in the advanced stages of CKD. Exercising is a strong anti-inflammatory. Inflammation is one of the main causes of scarring inside the kidneys and preventing this damage means that your kidneys are going to work for a lot longer. And one of the many ways in which exercising will help you is by decreasing water retention. Yeah, exercising is a form of detox because when you move, excess fluid stuck in places and causing swelling will also move and it will be much easier for the body to get rid of that excess fluid. Everyone is recommended to move as much as reasonably possible, even people on dialysis. Just keep in mind that exercising should be moderate and regular, alright? Never too strenuous. And always stay hydrated if you exercise. Even CKD patients with a fluid restriction may need a bit more water if they start exercising regularly. So also consult your doctor about this issue if you are going to start exercising. And today there is one more reason why you want to do that. The reason is that everyone has a third kidney in their body. Yes, I'm not joking. You see, the other organ in the body you can use to get rid of extra fluids, sodium and toxins is your skin. That's why regular exercise is a great way to catch two birds with one stone. Getting your heart rate up will help circulate whatever fluid you have built up and it will also directly help with controlling fluid retention through your skin, says science. So absolutely exercise regularly and also consider doing hot baths or saunas regularly to sweat more. Now guys, researchers actually develop a protocol to help kidney patients decrease uremic toxins through sweat. 
they are using saunas and hot baths and they have found out exactly how long and how often you will need to have a hot bath or a sauna in order to lower your creatinine levels. And if you want to know more, my video up here is for you! Time for my last entry now. As I was saying, without this one, the other good habits of today's video are going to be useless. You see, this is a good habit about hidden dangers. There are certain hidden dangers in the renal diet that are known to cause water retention and swelling, all right? So if you are doing your best to improve your kidney function and to decrease water retention, but you are falling prey of these mistakes, you are not going to get the results you want. So very important, always avoid hidden sodium. Everyone knows that salt causes fluid retention and damages the kidneys, right? And I know that you guys are careful with the salt shaker, but did you know that 80% of the salt people consume every day comes from packaged, processed, store-bought and restaurant foods? Another hidden danger, refined carbs. Refined carb sources like white bread, pasta and crackers are typically high in carbs or added sugar and low in fiber which may lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels bad for diabetes, but also for fluid retention. High insulin levels may cause more sodium retention by increasing the reabsorption of this mineral in your kidneys. This is why reducing your intake of refined carbs acts as a powerful natural diuretic. Now guys, many patients are still being told today to avoid foods containing potassium. But you see, that may be more dangerous than you may think. Potassium regulates sodium in the body and therefore may reduce water retention. When magnesium, potassium and sodium are out of balance, you can get water retention and dehydration at the same time. Another reason why you don't want to avoid high potassium foods is vitamin C. Vitamin C is a powerful detoxifier, but many CKD patients struggle to get enough of it. The reason? Potassium. Vitamin C and potassium go together in most of the cases, all right? Think citrus fruits, but also spinach, potatoes, tomatoes, broccoli, beets, avocados, and many more actually. In nature, where there is vitamin C, there is potassium. This is why most CKD patients that are told to avoid potassium-rich foods end up also seriously reducing their intake of vitamin C. This can cause water retention and swelling. Yeah, I know, the renal diet may look like a minefield when you think about this. There are actually some more hidden dangers in the renal diet you should probably know about. Certain veggies that are supposed to be healthy should come with a warning for certain patients. And if you want to know more about this topic, please watch my video about it. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.